This right here is the PC of your dreams. It has specs that exceed anything that most people build for themselves, and it has specs that exceed any PC I've ever built personally. This is the MSI Titan 18HX, and MSI sponsored this video for us to check out what is their flagship laptop, because this thing is packed to the gills, not just with specs, but also features that will make your life a lot easier in case you need the Mac daddy of laptops. So the easiest way to give you an understanding of what this laptop is capable of, I wanna go, just go through the spec list for you, okay? And buckle in, because it's big and a lot. Processor we're looking at, it's the Intel Core i9-14900HX. That's 24 cores, 32 threads, with a max clock of 5.8 gigahertz in a laptop. I remember back when I started my YouTube channel, I was running a Skylake chip and I was lucky to hit five gigahertz on the desktop component. And now we're going to 5.8 on the laptop. Brutal. It's got an RTX 4090 mobile that has 16 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. We'll talk about that in a second, but then under the hood, let's flip this thing over. Let me show you some of the beauties that it's got underneath, right under here. This little heat shield is preventing you from seeing the 128 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 mega transfers per second RAM. I have never put 128 gigs of RAM in any computer I've ever built. This PC right here, which is probably one of the more expensive ones we've done in recent history, has a 14900K, has an RTX 4090, and then has a modest 32 gigs of RAM. I would likely upgrade this to 64 at some point, but 128, are you freaking kidding me? But one of the benefits of the 18HX is that this is not maxed out. You can go up to 192 gigs if you use some of the 48 gig sticks that have recently come out. This is obscene, honestly. To have that much RAM in a laptop like this means that you have access to being able to run programs and not have to worry about sweating the small things, such as, do I have enough RAM to run this Photoshop After Effects? blender situation all at the same time. You've got it. And then this model has four terabytes of Gen 4 SSDs, which are currently installed. So you got two two terabyte SSDs, but there's room for an additional third one if you want. And this laptop comes equipped with one Gen 5 SSD slot and two Gen 4. So you can get super high speed. You can also max out if you stuff this full of eight terabyte drives, 24 terabytes of storage. Again, in a notebook that I can physically manhandle and Kyler spun on his finger. You remember doing that? No. Do you know how much this thing costs? I do. <laughs> and then also one of the things you'll notice under here is this mega battery. This is a 99.9 .9 watt hour battery, which is the legal limit here in the United States before you are no longer allowed to take it on a, a commercial flight. So in terms of battery life, you've got as much as you can possibly get. I mean, you are running ridiculous specs, so it's gonna chow through that, but you have, you have max capacity. Also, just taking a look under the hood, we have the killer Intel Wi-Fi 7 card. Now this allows it to get up to 5.8 gigabits per second of data transfer on a wireless network. That's more than most people have with their one gig ethernet jacks. I mean, I, we're not even equipped here for Wi-Fi 7. We have Wi-Fi 6E everywhere. So with the slate of Wi-Fi 7 devices coming out, this is exceeding what even my network here at my house is capable of taking advantage of. And then for the audio, you've got four two watt speakers and then two two watt woofers to allow you to get great sound, which we'll check out in a second. But I'm ignoring the biggest part of the underside of this laptop, which is this heat sink situation going on because this bad boy is capable of dissipating up to 270 watts of cooling. So MSI set it up so that the 14900HX and the 4090 can combine for a total of 270 watts of power, which is mind boggling in such a form factor. And they've done this because this actually has a vapor chamber heat pipe underneath, which has incredible internal volume. The specific number that they've included is 76,840 millimeters cube of internal volume on the actual vapor chamber assembly, allowing you to get effective heat dissipation between that 14900HX and that RTX 4090. If you're just running CPU heavy intensive tasks, that 14900HX can boost up to 200 watts by itself. When you're using them in tandem, let's say for gaming operations, the CPU is supposed to run at 95 watts while the GPU takes up that remaining 175. But it can dynamically allocate between the two to allow you to take advantage of what is just a 
monster cooling situation. And then also they've made the bottom plate of the laptop with 3D cooling stands so that you can get the maximum amount of airflow going to these internal fans. You've got two internal fans and four different exhaust situations, but with their 3D cooling stands, which are staggered to allow for better intake on the bottom of the laptop, it's making it so that you are adequately cooling what is some of the most powerful hardware you can get in a laptop today. So those are just the raw specs. We're going to get into testing this thing out and maybe even comparing it to a desktop, but that is what we are dealing with within the Titan. I've used multiple Titans across my time, specifically back in South Africa. We had a heavy rotation of Titan usage at the UFD tech office. I'm no stranger to it, and I've loved a lot of the innovations that they've made. And this 18HX continues some of the stuff that they were doing way back when. But before we dive into that, let's take a look at the IO that's on this laptop. So on the left hand side, you've got the audio combo jack, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 A port, Thunderbolt 4 USB-C, a second Thunderbolt 4 USB-C with power delivery 3.1 charging for all the rest of your devices. On the other side, then you have the Kensington lock over here to make sure nobody's taking this in case you have this in a public area. Another USB 3.2 Gen 2 A port, a further one, and then a full size SD card reader. And then on the back, you got a little bit more. The power in, which I want to talk a little bit more about that in a second, an HDMI 2.1 port, which can support up to 8K 60 Hertz, 4K 120, and then a two and a half gig ethernet port in case you want to take advantage of that. And the Wi-Fi 7 5.8 gigabits is not enough for you. But before we move on, let's talk about that power in for a second, because you have the 14900HX, you have the 4090 combining for up to 270 watts, a total power and heat that can be dissipated. How are you powering that? And that is with this power brick right here. It is a 400 watt AC DC adapter. This is the biggest power brick in terms of total wattage that I've ever used on a laptop. But back when I used to use some of the Titans, one of the ways that MSI used to achieve getting 300 watts of power to a laptop was having two bricks that they would then put to like a little combiner situation, which would then go straight into the laptop. So this is a much more desirable situation. The amount of power charging technology that's been developed to get a 400 watt brick in this size, it used to be you had to have two 270 watt bricks, I believe it was. And now it's all combined into one with a single port that allows you to get all of that power delivered straight to your eyeballs. Which, speaking of eyeballs, let's talk about this display because this is an 18 inch laptop. It's called the Titan 18 HX, but it's in the form factor of a 17 inch notebook because they've been able to reduce the bezels and make it so that it's a bit more compact than your traditional previous 18 inch laptops. But the panel on this is absurd. It's again, probably better than what most people have at home. It's a 4K plus mini LED 120 hertz panel. So that 4K plus, it's because this is in a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So you're looking at 3,840 horizontal pixels and 2,400 vertical pixels. That's a lot of pixels. It'll be four bucks, baby. You want fries with that? But I mentioned it's mini LED, OLED, very cost prohibitive. A lot of people don't like to use it in computer situations because of things like burn-in. Mini LED gives you a lot of advantages that OLED has, such as being able to turn off various portions of the backlight on the screen so that you can get deep black levels for higher contrast, which is great. But then this is also display HDR 1000, meaning that it can reach up to a thousand nits of peak brightness on this so that any daylight scene is perfectly illuminated, but then you're also still getting the contrast of the regular shadow scenes in a video game. And it also has 100% of the DCI-P3 color space so that you can use it for coloring work in case you want to do that. Now, in terms of the overall size, I did mention that this is in a 17 inch notebook form factor, but just to give it to you in straight numbers, it's 404 millimeters by 307 millimeters by 32 millimeters, weighing in at a total of 3.6 kilograms or roughly just under eight pounds. It is a big laptop, but it's also not one that you can't put into something like a, a normal backpack accommodated for a 17 inch laptop. It will weigh on you, but you're getting so much power in the palm of your back, as they say. But wait, there's more. I'm not done with all of the wonderful features that this laptop has. So you do have a Cherry MX keyboard. This is a 99 key keyboard coming in with per key RGB lighting. This is one of the things that MSI has been doing on their Titan laptop for the better part of a decade at this point. I remember seeing the first one with Cherry MX keys in it back at Computex at some point. So it's, you're getting the mechanical feedback. It sounds very good. 
got the good clacks. And you can customize it however you want because it's got per key RGB, so that can be set up. But then also what has customizable RGB, you'll notice is this bad boy down here. That is an RGB touchpad, which is controlled with the same Steel Series software, allowing you to customize that how you want. So in this Steel Series software, you can see that you can set a variety of effects, whether that's clown, where the touchpad will synchronize with what's going on with the actual keyboard, or you just have a regular rainbow so that's fizzling through all of the various colors of the RGB rainbow that you want. You got Vapor Dreams as well, so that can fade up from the bottom. It's just a nice little bit of customization that you can see right here. It does look like it's flashing on the camera right now, but that's just because of a mismatch between what the display is here and then our shutter speed on our camera. That's it. It, it does not look like that in real life. It, it just looks like a solid color. But that's not the only innovation MSI has put into the touchpad right here, because it actually is just a solid piece. It's a seamless piece right here, which MSI MSI is calling the world's first seamless RGB haptic touchpad because there are no physical clicking buttons, but when you press down on it, there's a haptic motor underneath, which actually helps to simulate as if you're pressing down on it. And I could be fooled. Closing my eyes, wherever my finger is pressing, it feels like it's moving underneath me because of the haptic motor. What do you think, Kyle? You want, you want to come touch it? Like wherever you're clicking, there's a vibration right under your finger. I was fooled. You were fooled, if it, but there's nowhere for it to click. And then just to top out all of the specs, the last little one, it's got a full HD webcam with the shutter so that you can close it up. This thing is loaded to the gills with, I, I mean, I struggle to think of anything more that I could possibly want from a high-end gaming laptop that I can take on the go. This thing is essentially capable of doing everything. So let's go ahead and put that to the test. We've got the MSI Overboost Ultra, which allows us to get 270 watts of total power coming from this. Let's plug it in. Let's give it all the juice that we possibly can. And let's see how we can get certain games running at 4K. I mean, one of the things to note with this laptop screen is that we actually had it hooked up to, there's a TV behind there. You can't see it because we put paper in front of it, but there's a TV back there. There's an 86 inch 4K TV. It's, it's not the most bright TV in the world, but just seeing the display when we're mirroring them, this thing is so much brighter. This thing is so obviously more pixel dense because it's 4K, but the, the quality of the display really shines when you compare it to something that you're just used to seeing around your house. Of course, we're gonna run Cyberpunk. Let's turn on HDR to make sure that we're getting maximum use of the brightness. My goodness, that is a very, very bright display. So we're set up at 3840 by 2400. Let's go graphics. We got Ray Tracing Ultra. Let's put it on Ray Tracing Overdrive just to make sure we have pure path tracing running. We're gonna keep frame generation off. We're gonna have DLSS still on, but frame gen's gonna be turned off just to see what it looks like without any generated frames in terms of FPS in Cyberpunk. But already just in a very bright studio environment, we immediately set it to HDR and the brightness got so high that you had to turn down the exposure that's on the camera in order to properly expose for it. Okay, we're struggling with fully path trace, but that's to be expected. This brings a desktop 4090 to its knees. But by golly, if this doesn't look good. Oh, that is that is gorgeous. Seeing the difference between the shadows that are going on down here. This is a great scene, especially when you look at the highlights that are happening as you're coming into the full sun versus all of the shadows. This is such a good, visual representation of HDR. And with the thousand nits peak brightness, you're getting a very good experience here on a gaming laptop. This thing's pixel dense, it's powerful, it's running. This brick, honestly, is still cool enough to put to my face. 32.97 with path trace graphics. If you told me about this back when I first tested out an MSI Titan, I, I would have lost my mind. Okay, so I'm planning on doing some number crunching with this Titan laptop. I'm gonna put it through its paces with a few other games and then test it out against a full desktop 14900K and RTX 4090. We do have to keep in mind, we are dealing with different power differentials. This thing pulling 270 watts capable of cooling it. The GPU on a desktop 4090, uh, is typically 450, you can sometimes get them 600 watts. So you're, you're, you're dealing with differences of situations, but I wanna see how we can get this to compare with a full desktop and see how the Mac Daddy of gaming laptops holds up. 
All right, so I've run a few substantial benchmarks on the Titan 18HX with its 14900HX processor, which compared to something like a desktop 14900K is honestly pretty close in specs. You're losing a few hundred megahertz when it comes to clock speed, but cache remains roughly the same. The main difference is the amount of power that you're going to consume. A desktop 14900K can get all the way up to three, 400 watts if you choose to unlock it. But in gaming scenarios, you're looking more at 95 watts here on the 18HX. The 4090 is where things really change for something like a laptop. This desktop card has roughly 16,000 cores, whereas the laptop one is closer to 9,700. So you're at roughly 60% of the amount of cores that come with a desktop 4090, but then you're also still running into power constraints. Again, this entire system takes 270 watts total. My desktop founder's 4090 was looking at roughly 300 watts while it was just running games at 4K. But I say all of this to give you the proper context of what a laptop is capable of. You're limited by a couple of things, namely specs and power, but I did adjust my desktop situation to account for the power, and we're gonna see how close this thing gets to a desktop when they're consuming roughly the same wattage. So at full tilt, testing games at 4K, high settings, a desktop 14900K and 4090 blows the Titan 18HX out of the water. Roughly double the frame rate in a game like Horizon Forbidden West, roughly double the frame rate in The Witcher 3, and then roughly double the frame rate in a game like Cyberpunk 2077. All GPU heavy games. If we take a look at a CPU benchmark, the desktop 14900K gets roughly 2100 points in the latest Cinebench 2024 application, whereas the 18HX gets 1523. So roughly losing a quarter of performance just by putting it in a laptop. But thankfully, because MSI has made it so that you can boost the 14900HX up to 200 watts of power, Power, that power gap between CPU and CPU isn't as big of a deal. But when the GPU can only go up to 175 versus a 300 to 450 watt GPU, you are losing out when you have 60% of the cores. But again, I brought everything down. 95 watts on the CPU, the 14900K and the desktop, and made sure that the GPU was also at 175 watts by setting its power limit down to 39%. So it still has the advantage of 16,000 cores versus 9,700, but it can no longer suck all of the juice that it wants. And that brings it pretty dang close. A power limited 4090, 14900K system got roughly 30 FPS more in Horizon Forbidden West, so about 50% increase. Something like The Witcher 3 was a a lot closer. There was only a three FPS difference between the two, probably because this is an older game. It's a bit more mature. It's not relying on some of the new processing that's going to go on in something like Horizon Forbidden West. But then in Cyberpunk 2077, we're within nine FPS, 80 FPS on the power limited desktop and 71.4 on the laptop. And then the Cinebench score got even closer, limiting that CPU down to 95 watts brought us to 1582. And I'll remind you that the Titan got 1523. So the number get really close when you bring a desktop down to the power consumption of a laptop. You're within a healthy margin, even considering that the specs are what they are. MSI is not capable of increasing the 4090's core count past what it is, but what they are giving you is an exceptionally capable laptop that can deliver as much performance as you would expect out of a 4090 mobile. Giving it 175 watts of cooling with the high volume vapor chamber means that you again are getting really, really close to desktop class performance, if you take into account that you're running it off of a single power brick and not a 1,000 to 1,200 watt power supply. As mentioned earlier in the video, MSI's laptops have kind of like a special place in UFD tech history. A lot of our original videos were edited on not a Titan, because I couldn't afford it at a time, but a more modest i7 plus GTX 970M laptop. The first several dozen videos of UFD tech were edited on that. And then when I had to make a quick trip back to the US in 2018, MSI South Africa lent me a Titan to be able to take my desktop editing power on the road with us. And now we're back here seeing what MSI has accomplished here in the year of 2024. And it's again, just as impressive. There have been things that they've changed and refined over the years with the Titan that makes the 18HX just 
that much more special. The RGB touchpad, with it being seamless, the haptic motor that allows you to feel as if you're clicking down the per key RGB Cherry MX mechanical switches, a 400 watt power brick with a single connector is fantastic. And then the screen is just so beautiful. I've been switching between different laptops here in the office, my editing monitors, and every time I behold this 4K plus 120 Hertz mini LED 1000 nits brightness screen, I'm just enamored. This thing is incredible. So you can check out the MSI Titan 18HX at the link in the video description. This is for people who want to have the best that they can possibly have while they're on the go. If you have a desktop at home and you plan on just staying at a desktop, the Titan maybe won't compete with everything, but the Titan will make it so that when you're traveling hotels, you're vagabonding for your job, trying to make sure that you can squeeze in a little bit of extra gaming at night while you're waiting for your next appointment, the Titan 18HX excels at that. So again, big thanks to MSI for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you in the next video, friends.